I, 23 female, have an Irish twin, 24 female. We've been living together for two years. She's a single mom of a toddler. When we first moved in together, the apartment was only in her name and she let me live with her. I was finishing dental assisting school and couldn't qualify for an apartment alone. I still paid half the rent and utilities. After graduating and getting a job, I became an officially added roommate to the lease last year. I make a lot of money for my age, so when my sister struggled to pay half of the rent when her job cut her hours significantly, it was a no-brainer to start paying more. I could easily afford all the rent, so covering another 25% is nothing. Plus, I love her and my niece. My sister has no help from the father, so I help her as much as possible. He works under the table, so he doesn't get his wages garnished for child support. I've watched her struggle to afford daycare and food for her baby, so I also help her with that. Two days ago, my sister sat me down and told me she had news. She's pregnant. My jaw dropped. I asked who the dad is, and she starts crying. I didn't expect her to say her deadbeat baby daddy. I was shocked, and she continued her explanation. She saw a girl commenting under his posts and went on her page and saw that they'd taken pictures at the same place at the same time. The girl also posted him for his birthday weeks later, saying, Happy birthday to my fiancé. She messaged her, letting her know he was a deadbeat and got blocked. Then her baby daddy called her, saying she was a crazy witch, leading them to get a hotel room. They slept with each other, all to prove some point to his fiancé that he was not loyal and she could have him whenever she wanted because she sent her proof after they slept together, but the fiancé stayed with him. As she's telling me this story, I just sit there upset. I started asking her if she went to the doctor and how far along she is. She said she did stop by PP and got a scan. She's nine weeks. I told my sister that I wasn't going to be re-signing the lease unless she got a termination. She looked at me with so much disgust and started crying harder. She called me an evil witch and said I was a horrible person for making her choose between her baby and having housing. I told her that with her hours now, she can't even afford half the rent, let alone the daycare she splits between me, our dad and aunt, to understand the position she's putting me in since the responsibility is falling on me. She told our family and they're angry, saying I'm being heartless even to ask her that and I shouldn't punish her and that I should sign at least six months so she can get her act together since five weeks isn't a lot of time. I said no, she's ungrateful for all the help I've done, so I'm out. They're saying I'm an idiot since when I didn't qualify, she let me live with her, even though I paid half. Not the idiot. I hate when family tries to spend other family members' money. Tell your family that they can co-sign for your sister and pitch in on the rent since they're so adamant about it. You aren't forcing your sister to get a termination, you just aren't going to live with her if she has another kid. The kids are not your responsibility and you shouldn't have to care for them. She slept with him to prove a point to his fiance. That's why she's a single mother twice by the same lousy, absent baby daddy. Deadbeat dad's future wife should know that they will get it out of her wages if he can't afford child support. When they get married, the courts consider the household income so that she will be on the hook for both kids. Good point. Sister thinks getting knocked up again by an absent father proves a point. She can get a deadbeat fiancé anytime she wants, and now she's a single mother of two. At this point, I don't sympathise with her because she wants to suffer and make her kids suffer too. She didn't have to do any of that insane, impossibly stupid crap, and now she's mad no one's supporting the result of her whack decisions. No one told her to do any of that. Like, come on, man. OP, run, do not walk. She's never going to learn, and it's not your responsibility to support her crazy level of stupidity. Update, our dad and stepmom have young kids so there's no space, plus he pays a third of the daycare, split between me, my aunt and him. Said aunt lives in a different state so she can't physically help but is the main one telling me I'm disgusting. I suggested that my sister move in with aunt, and she shot it down, saying moving while pregnant is rough. The school district in our town is much better than our aunt who lives in a big city. We have different moms, her mom is a deadbeat and remarried in a different state, and my mom thinks I should have moved out a long time ago. So last week, while I was on a business trip, my fiancé let her brother borrow my car since he needed one for whatever reason and doesn't own one, and she was using hers to go to work. When I came back, I noticed the entire front bumper was dented and basically destroyed, so when I went to ask her what happened, she told me that she let her brother borrow it and he drove it into a pillar by accident. For some context, my car was a gift from my dad for my graduation and had tons of sentimental value to me, so I told her I would expect her brother to foot the bill of around 20000 to get the bodywork replaced after I got an estimate from the dealership. 
She said she couldn't do that since her brother hadn't held a job since the global issue hit and he wouldn't be able to afford it. This made me even madder than I already was, so I left the apartment, got myself a hotel room and sent her brother a message saying I'd expect him to pay for the repairs, otherwise I'd get the lawyers involved. I'm currently considering calling off the engagement or postponing the wedding because I don't think I can trust my fiancé around my finances anymore after she basically loaned something worth $150,000, I drive a BMW M4, to her wildly irresponsible brother without telling me. This is after she already knows how much that car means to me, not just financially, but sentimentally as well, and then proceeded to try and defend her brother because I can afford to get it repaired while he can't. Am I the idiot for calling off my engagement? Not the idiot, so instead of her being reasonable and going, you can borrow my car and I'll borrow my fiancé's car, she let her idiot brother use your car. She's not just disrespectful, but dumb as a doorknob. It's a good thing this happened before she could take half your assets. Not dumb, calculating. My brother is irresponsible. He may damage my car. I cannot afford to replace my car, but OP can afford to fix his. Also, OP's car lets everyone know how successful and cool the fiancé's brother is. That's why he needs to drive the expensive luxury car and not his sister's. I'd get my ring back and give her and her family 30 days to get me $20,000 to repair my car, or I'd call the cops and file a lawsuit. There is no way in heck if you marry her that her brother and other family just start using your stuff. People who do this stuff agree to let deadbeat family members move in for undisclosed stays. This is not a family you want to marry into, OP. Cut your losses. You can do better. I'm a 25-year-old man. I have two sisters and six female cousins, all younger than me. All that to say, I'm used to being around girls and young women of all ages. I know how to treat them respectfully as equals and to be a protective cousin or brother when needed. My wife's sister, Rachel, 28, is having some difficulty, and the family is trying to help, including by supporting her daughter, Elle, pre-tween. My in-laws had Elle over for dinner, while Rachel was at home catching up on household stuff, and my wife and I were there too. Elle kept talking about a tea party Rachel would take her to the next day. She was very excited about it, like it's all she talked about, haha. -ha. The next day, Rachel reached out in the family chat, asking if someone could take Elle because she felt sick. Everyone was working except me, so I asked her for the information, picked up Elle and took her. The event flyer on the door said it was for girls and their moms, grandmas, aunts, godmothers, etc. When I got there, I explained I was standing in for her mother and I asked if I could stay and participate with Elle. They said yes, but I know I was side-eyed the whole time. Whatever, I was there so Elle could have fun. We drank tea, coloured pictures, and did a few other activities. At the end, each girl got to take a picture with their adult person, which was supposed to be posted on their social media later, so I took a picture with Elle. The next day, I went onto the group page I had to request access to get the picture to send to Rachel. It wasn't posted with the others. I couldn't figure out who to message, so I left a comment that said, can I please get the picture of me and my niece? Thanks. I didn't hear anything back, so I decided to check the group again, only to find a post by one of the participants stating how uncomfortable they were with a man at the event. This was followed by comments such as, probably thought he could sneak into the girls' room or something, was probably waiting there to mansplain anything he could. The one that made me so mad I could only laugh was, typical to insert a man where he wasn't invited. Other comments expressed anger that I wasn't asked to leave, with one person even saying the police should have been called. The thread was eventually locked and deleted. I haven't looked since. I don't know any of these people. I spoke to maybe one person there and there were more comments than there were even people in attendance. I've only told my wife about this so far because I'm dumbfounded. But am I the idiot for simply taking my niece to an event? Yes, it was for women, but was the better alternative really to not let her participate in something she was excited about after literally driving her to it? I do plan to tell Rachel that I don't think Elle should go back there. I don't trust them not to try to ask her if she's safe or something else out of line. Rachel is not part of the group that hosted it. I think she learned of the event somewhere else. To clarify, my sister-in-law did not know this was a woman-only event. She was told of it via word of mouth and I didn't see that information on the flyer until my niece and I were at the door. Also, there was one other man there, the person making the snacks, I believe, as an employee of the little cafe it was held at. I've seen him there before. There were 10 to 15 women at the event itself.
Not the idiot. You asked permission, it was granted, and you did nothing wrong. The comments you got on that page, though, were freaking disgusting. You were a good uncle, and I commend you for doing whatever possible to give your niece an excellent time. The big factor here is that you asked if it was okay for you to stay, rather than just assuming it. Those people were out of line. Keep up being an awesome uncle, and don't let this hiccup dissuade you from being the best one you can be. As a public school teacher with a wife who works year-round, I did many things like this. I was flat out told by several mom groups that dads weren't welcome. I couldn't find a group for my kids to socialize with. I hate to say it, but I think it's a mix of things. They have uninvolved husbands and are jealous. They are there to socialize with other moms and don't want to have an awkward conversation with their husbands about a man they were talking to. Flat out misogyny involving gender roles. Heaven forbid, gasp, you were a gay or single dad who doesn't need a mom at all. The funny part is, as a teacher, I'm used to socializing in female-dominated environments. It's sometimes even hard to small talk with random dads because I don't know a thing about sports. In today's world, where damn near everybody is trying to fight against gender bias and becoming a more tolerant world, this is insane. I, 32 male, am getting married to my long-term girlfriend Gemma, 30, at the end of next month. Now Gemma and I are having a small wedding with only close family and friends invited, mainly because we don't want it to inconvenience others, and choosing a venue is hard due to Gemma's allergy. Gemma is allergic to dogs and is terrified of them due to a freak accident when she was younger. That's also when she found out she's allergic to them. While her allergy is not deadly, even when taking anti-allergies, her face would get significantly swollen and have red marks all over it that are visible even with heavy makeup, and she would constantly sneeze. Lockdown was a blessing in that she could wear a face mask that was helping with allergies. She's still trying to wear face masks to help her, but can't always do it inside, as people always think that she's ill and doesn't really want to have us in their restaurants or cafes. And to the issue, my sister Kate has diabetes and has a service dog, Lenny, to help her. I absolutely adore him and Gemma isn't scared of him either. However, due to Emma's allergies, I've reminded Kate not to take Lenny to our wedding. I was dropping some parcels for her this week as she was away and they were sent to my house, as I believe my future wife should be able to enjoy her day without the swelling, which would be hard to avoid due to the venue being quite small and private. Gemma gets the reaction even if there's a dog in the same supermarket, even if it doesn't touch her. My sister has been reminded he's a service animal and I can't ask her not to take him, but I have told her he's still a dog and being a service animal doesn't miraculously cancel my wife's allergies, and she knew about them from the start. I'm not asking not to take him to any family get-togethers, I'm just asking not to take him to our wedding. My sister and my mom both call me an idiot and are not talking to me and have threatened not to come to the wedding, which I said is fine as I value my wife's comfort more. But still, am I the idiot? So what's your sister's solution? Have your future wife suffer at her wedding? Is this some kind of dominance play? It's true you can't ask someone not to bring a service dog, but you can uninvite your sister. You have to stick up for your wife and it's good you're doing so. I'll predict the future now and say that you'll have to do that more often later on because your sister and your mother will blame your wife for choosing her stupid health over your sister's dog. Not the idiot. Prepare for more fights in the future. Your sister has to be reminded that she can only enforce bringing her dog to public spaces. She can't force allergic people out of private places to spend her time there. And people like her can spend some hours without that dog. She won't die. She can test her blood sugar herself for one. If she's unsure, she can have her mother stay by her side to check on her. Yeah, that's my thing too. The dog is trained to smell when she's about to spiral and warn her. Outside of that, the dog can't give her an insulin shot or check her blood sugar. It's just an early alert system. Even without checking, she can mitigate it by what she did her entire life before the dog, or possibly even stacking on a granola bar every hour or so just to keep herself topped off. It's not an exact science. We have the tools to monitor it. She'll be okay one day if it really comes to it. I, 32 male, am starting to feel uncomfortable when my girlfriend, 36, spends time with her guy friend. Am I in the wrong for feeling this way? My girlfriend met this guy on the same dating app that she and I found each other on, but she found him a couple of months before us. She said they'd only kissed and didn't feel any romantic feelings for him, so they just stayed friends. She told me all this pretty early on in the relationship, 
but now that she's going out with him to an open-air cinema, and the other day I didn't get a message all day from her until the end of work, all I got was, sorry, been busy all day today, going to meet up with guy friend, hope your day was good, then no answer until she got back to her place about 1 o'clock in the morning. I confronted her and now she turned it around saying I don't trust her etc and now I feel bad for sharing my feelings with her. Should I be worried? Do I feel jealous? I don't think anything's going on, it just feels weird to me. Am I a controlling idiot? Edit, she met him on a dating app and now they're planning a project together for her work. She works with children and he does some sort of art stuff that she wants him to come in and do stuff for work. They had a picnic outside on a big screen public cinema just after sunset. She had planned to go with me, then said a few days before she was too tired, then finally ended up going with the guy. Yikes, the prognosis ain't looking good, bro. You are not the idiot, but don't let her make you think you are controlling because you're not. A guy friend she met on a dating app is not to be trusted. It's not about you not trusting her, you don't trust him and that's fair. Set your boundaries and stick to them. Boundaries are not you being controlling, no matter how much she may try to convince you it is. Dude, you're going to be second fiddle to this guy if she's not already banging him behind your back. It's one thing to have male friends, but it's a whole other deal when you plan a date with your boyfriend, cancel it, and then go on the same date with your friend. It's clear where you stand here. OP, listen. That is not what a respectful partner would do, at least if that's what your standards are for one. They've literally kissed before and went on what could be perceived as a date to some. Find someone who respects you, OP. You're cooked, buddy. Grow a spine and dump her.